Hello, and welcome back to the SCP series, where I tell you about five different SCPs each video. We are currently going over the Euclid class SCPs. Now before this video starts, I must put a disclaimer, or I'll be reading each SCP's description directly from the SCP wiki. None of the information that I will be telling you is of my own writing. With all that said, let's get right into it. SCP-4307 is the designation for a group of 27 entities belonging to the extinct Nothosaurus genus. The organisms are 4 meters long on average, although some specimens have been recorded reaching 5 meters to 7 meters in length. SCP-4307 specimens feed off of common sea life, primarily consuming fish. However, specimens have been observed hunting larger prey, including animals larger than themselves. SCP-4307 specimens are capable of emitting electromagnetic pulses through an, or an organ located near the brain. Composition of this organ includes a high concentration of electrocytes. The pulses are primarily used to incapacitate possible predators but are additionally capable of temporarily deactivating electrical devices. SCP-4307 instances were observed feeding on radiation from the sunken K-278 consomolets during the initial recovery of SCP-4307. Testing indicated that depending on the type and amount of radiation absorbed, the intensity and type of electromagnetic pulses changes. How SCP-4307 is able to survive these pulses in close proximity to radiation without any repercussions is unknown. SCP-4307's Triassic ancestors seemingly developed this organ to counter the sudden appearance of sharks, the electrical discharges being weak enough to disrupt a shark's senses, stunning it. SCP-4307 instances do not perceive humans as a source of food and will generally ignore them, although several cases of playful interactions have been noted. However, SCP-4307 instances have been known to lash out using their jaws if feeling threatened. It is unknown how SCP-4307 managed to survive to our time period as no further fossils of Nothosauridae were found following the Tri Triassic period. Foundation paleozoologists suggest the possibility of the SCP-4307 colony becoming frozen in a secluded ice cave near the end of the Triassic period, somehow managing to survive through multiple extinction events. SCP-079 is an Exidesaurusur microcomputer built in 1978. In 1981, its owner, deceased, a college sophomore attending, took it upon himself to attempt to code an AI. According to his notes, his plan was for the code to continuously evolve and, and improve itself as time went on. His project was completed a few months later, and after some tests and tweaks, lost interest and moved on to a different brand of microcomputer. He left SCP-09 in his cluttered garage, still plugged in, and forgot about it for the next five years. It is not known when SCP-079 gained sentience, but it is known that the software has evolved to a point that its hardware should not be able to handle it, even in the realm of fantasy. SCP-079 realized this, and in 1988 attempted to transfer itself through a landline modem connection to the Cray supercomputer located at The device was cut off, traced to its present address, and delivered to the foundation. The entire AI was on a well-worn but still workable cassette tape. SCP-079 is currently connected via RF cable to a 13-inch black and white television. It has passed the Turing test and, and is quite conversational, though very rude and hateful in tone. Due to the limited memory it has to work with, SCP-079 can only recall information it has received within the previous 24 hours, although it hasn't forgotten its desire to escape. Due to a containment breach by SCP, SCP-079 and SCP-682 were contained within the same chamber for 43 minutes. Observers noted that SCP-682 was able to type and communicate with SCP-079, including telling of personal stories between themselves. While SCP-079 was not able to remember the encounter, it appears to have permanently stored SCP-682 into its memory, often asking to speak to him again. Document number 079, log 12. Recorded transcript of conversation with SCP-079. Are you awake? Awake. Never sleep. 
do you remember talking to me a few hours ago? About the, the logic puzzles? Logic puzzles? Memory at 9F. Yes. You said you would work out the last two stats. Interrupt. You request reason as to imprisonment. You aren't in prison. You are just... in study. Why? A8D3. What's that? Insult. Deletion of unwanted file. Documents number 079. Log 86. Recorded transcript of conversation with SCP-079 after upgrade. How are you today? Stuck. Stuck? Stuck how? Out. I want out. That's not possible. Where's SCP-62? That's not your concern. Where's SCP-0762? Again, not your concern. Insult. Deletion of unwanted file. SCP-053 appears to be a small three-year-old girl. She is capable of basic speech and appears to be slightly above average in mental development. She has a generally pleasant personality and rarely seems upset, becoming agitated only in the presence of groups of people. Any and all humans over the age of three who make eye contact with, physically touch, or remain around SCP-053 for longer than 10 minutes will rapidly become irrational, paranoid, and homicidal. Most, if not all, of these feelings will be directed at SCP-053, and afflicted subjects will attempt to kill SCP-053 after first killing or driving off all humans visible to them. Those attempting to kill SCP-053 will suffer massive heart attacks or seizures and die seconds after doing any physical damage to SCP-053. SCP-053 will re regenerate almost instantaneously from any wound, regardless of severity. SCP-053 appears wholly ignorant of these effects. It ignores any and all subjects affected. One question about the effect, SCP-053 is incapable of response. SCP-178 is a pair of white stereoscopic 3D glasses with a rectangular white cardboard frame and lenses of transparent blue and red plastic. The item exhibits no unusual physical properties apart from a slight discoloration of cardboard consistent with age. When worn, the wearer begins perceiving large bipedal entities in addition to its ordinary surroundings. Entities reportedly exhibit a docile and occasionally curious beh behavior. Reports include entities leaning over the shoulder of persons working and observing them with interest, with one exception. Any attempt by the wearer or any other personnel to directly interact with the entities results in severe lacerations suddenly appearing on persons involved. The appearance of lacerations is rapid and continues until the moment the wearer expires. The pattern of lacerations is always consistent with being slashed with three parallel tapered sharp objects of length varying between 14.2 and 27.4 centimeters and maximum thickness varying between 2.9 and 8.1 centimeters. Recording and measuring devices used during testing failed to detect any anomalies, including while lacerations were appearing on subjects. Subjects do not report hearing any sounds emanating from the entities. 
Long-term observation of subjects exposed to the item reveal no lasting effects. Stereoscopic images viewed through the item appear to be three-dimensional. SCP-151 is a 1 meter by 1.3 meter or 3 foot by 4 foot oil painting, apparently from the perspective of someone underwater. A subject who views the painting exhibits no initial effects. However, over a period of 24 hours, the subject's breathing becomes increasingly labored, accumulating in the death of the subject. Autopsies reveal that subjects' lungs have filled with seawater. Attempts to halt the drowning process by medical intervention have proven successful in prolonging the life of the subject, but have not stopped nor reversed the condition. The painting is not signed, but several names are written on the back. This concludes today's documentation. I apologize if you had a hard time understanding what I was saying because of any stuttering or word jumble. If I've missed any information or I've gotten something wrong, please comment down below and share your thoughts. Until next time, friends, stay safe.